Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love, not hate, is what makes America great. Love, not hate. No one knows it better than here, the United Nations of America, a place we call Brooklyn, where 47% of Brooklynites speak a language other than English at home. We know how important it is to stand in unison, to come together and state that the sick policy of ripping babies from their parents is something that would not be tolerated in our America, not while we are alive and breathing in this country. And I want to just personally thank the parents who have created this into a teaching moment for their children, who allowed their children to carry signs and create signs and place signs on the sides of their strollers and came out to send a strong message that a baby from El Salvador or Mexico or Trinidad or any other place is not someone else's baby. There are our babies and our children. It doesn't matter if they are at our border or within our border. They are the children of the globe, and as human beings with common decency, you should never take a baby away from their child that is taking place now. This carriage here is a symbol of protection. It's a symbol of nurturing. It's a symbol of what children represent in America. It's a symbol of who and what we are. It is the foundation of our existence as American people. And when you take a baby out of this and remove them from their mother or their father, you're destroying the foundation of America and that cannot happen in America. So we want to thank the organizations that have come together with us. Uproads, Social Justice Subcommittee, Brooklyn Diocese, Jewish Relation Community Council, my good friend and civil rights attorney, Norman Siegel, New York State Chaplain Task Force, Arab American Family Support Center. That's a beautiful sound hearing that baby. Greenwood Baptist Church, St. Paul's Community Baptist Church, Office of Nidia Velasquez, United Volunteer for the Community, Kirsten Foy from NAN, National Action Network, Refugee, Refugee Church of God, Friends of Sunset Park, we're in the Sunset, Sunset Park community. So I want to turn this over to hear from the voices of those who are part of this coalition. I want to first start with Norman Siegel, who would help us and has continued to help us understand the legal ramifications of why what they're doing is wrong and why we can do a better job. Imagine those you voted for in Congress and the Senate and the mayor and the governor, they don't know the babies that are in our jurisdiction. What? You're talking about a president who has gone out of control. The mere fact the local elected officials that you elected on, cannot tell you who's in our boundaries. That, right. that is un-American. Right. The power of local authorities to know who's within their communities is the most basic principle of this country. You can't supersede that. We did not elect a dictator. We elected a president who soon will be gone with our, 
with our force. So I want to bring up civil rights attorney Norman Siegel. Well, thank you, Eric, and thank you and the other elected officials who are here to show what leadership is all about. And of course, thank you to all the people who are here today, especially from Brooklyn. There exists a need. Let them know we're here. There exists a need for an urgent national organized public outcry in opposition to the current policy and practice of separating children from their parents at the southern borders in Texas. The zero tolerance policy is premised on the belief that families seeking political asylum in America by crossing over the United States-Mexican border unauthorized are engaging in criminal behavior. This premise is inconsistent, inconsistent with the promise of the Statue of Liberty that's not too far from where we are right now. And that promise, and I quote, give me your tired, give me your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. The goal is to enlist as many Americans from Brooklyn all across America, across political, racial, religious, economic, and geographic lines to come together with a strong united voice calling for an end to this policy. Do you agree with me? Yes. We strongly believe that this effort is the right time at the right place, and it is essential from a policy, legal, and moral perspective. Let me briefly touch upon three legal overviews. First, we should clearly declare that such a policy is inhumane and constitutionally suspect as cruel and unusual punishment under the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Two, you all probably heard about the Flores decision and the settlements. Well, let me tell you, it's been around since 1985, 33 years when a 15-year-old Jenny Lisette Flores was apprehended by INS attempting to cross the U.S.-Mexican border. She became the named plaintiff in a national federal class action which sets the standards for the treatment of immigrant minors in the custody of our federal government. One consistent theme and requirement throughout these three decades, and I quote from the settlement, prompt and continuous efforts towards family reunification and the release of minors without, without unnecessary degree. So let's use the mantra of the Southern Civil Rights Movement. Let's keep our eyes on the prize and the eyes on the prize is not necessarily the conditions where they are, but on releasing the minors and reunifying the families. That's the focus. Transparency. Our government is doing this in our name, in our name. So we need to demand the following three things. One, how many minors are in the United States now? How many are in New York State? And how many are in New York City? And how many are in Brooklyn, if any? Now, we also need to know what are the conditions because the settlement sets forth all the particular things that the government must meet. And my instinct tells me they're not meeting those conditions. I want to thank the governor and the mayor for writing on Friday to DHHS asking for that information. It would have been better, and this is a call to the governor mayor, do it together. We need you to come together to help us not be separated. And finally, we the citizens have some rights. So on Friday, my law firm and another law firm sent a freedom of information request to the secretary at DHS. I'll just read you the three sentences that we start. We hereby request any and all records relating to the placement and or sheltering of any location in the state of New York 
of any and all unaccompanied minors whose separation from their parents was caused by or related in any way to zero pollens on legal immigrants, including but not limited to any and all records relating to the total number of such minors in the state of New York as of the date of this response. Remember, we can rely on the elected officials, but we the people, we have rights. We the people must speak out. The more we speak out, the more the electors will speak out. Don't forget that's our obligation. And let me conclude. Let me conclude and again thank Borough President Adams for his leadership. Give him an applause, don't worry about that. The point I want to make, history is going to judge each one of us. In time, historians, our children, our grandchildren, they're going to come to us 10, 15 years from now and they're going to say, Dad, Mom, Grandpa, Grandma, were you around in 2018 when I read in the book that they separated families? And then they're going to ask us the all-important question. What did you do? And I hope that every one of us can say we stood up, we were counted, and we stopped this inhumane policy. So let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Thank you. We also joined by Make the Road, New York Immigration Coalition, and NYCC. Just a few more speakers. Right here in this assembly district, we have Assemblyman Felix Ortiz. All right, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Board of President. Let's give another round of applause to our Board of President. Let me tell you this. This is done overdue. And we should be, we should be putting a lot of pressure to the state government and, gonna, and to, the, uh, to Congress as we speak. This is a complete immoral, it is a complete immoral issue. This president has bring the country down. This president, we cannot go to any country without looking at ourselves in the middle first before we can tell the people overseas that we're coming from America. Because this president has made our country to be a shameful country. And it's, the time has come now for every single one of us to really to come united in the forefront to make sure that all those children that has been taken away from their family, that they will be reunited back to their families. I was in McKellen, Texas, and I will tell you what happened in McKellen, Texas. I'm the Vice President of the National Hispanic Caucus State Legislator, an organization that I created back in 1995 to bring legislators throughout the country together to fight for immigration reform, to fight for the important issue that is impacting our community. When we went to McKellen, 25 legislators throughout the country, including members from Puerto Rico, we're standing right there just the way we, we, we're standing across that building in, the, in, our front, in my front and the building in my back. And we was asked, can we go in? The response that we got was, you are not allowed to go into that building. And we will continue to stay there for two days. Two days, two days to demand that we, a state legislator that came from 25 different states, that we will be allowed to go to see these children. Well, we left with our hands empty, we left with our eyes empty, and we left with our pocket empty. But we went back to our communities and our, our state. And this is what I would like to say. We did pass a bill in the New York State Assembly that we are calling on the state senate to go back because this bill will give undocumented immigrant parents that facing possible deportation from New York to will be able to choose a guardian. They will be able to choose a guardian in the state of New York if we able to do that bill and the governor sign that bill. But we need the Senate to come in and do it. So we will have hope. We have hope in the state of New York. And I have a lot of faith on my people. And I know we're going to do what is right for them. And we will continue to put the fight. And we have to remember one thing. It's going to be a primary on Tuesday. We need to watch what happened in November. The same way we're coming in big numbers to help my family and to help your family 
Let's do the same thing in November that we can turn the house around and Congress become to be Democrat. May God bless you. Let's keep the faith and let's continue to fight together. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Brad Lander. Thank you to our borough president. It's so wonderful to be out here with our majority leader, Lori Cumbo, and her son, Prince. On the march over here, just a few blocks, uh, for just a minute, I took the stroller of a, a little boy named Connor, who's here with us today, so that his parents could hold the sign they had brought and march alongside with their sign. And in just, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, Connor noticed somebody unusual had his stroller, um, and he wasn't happy about it. And I think part of what this, and he, he let us know that just being separated in that most, they were right next to us. Uh, and we've been there, those of us who are parents, what it feels like when our kids are away from us just that much. And that cry they start to give uh, without the certainty, without the protection, without the guarantee that that love, that that protection, that their parents are right there. Every one of us has felt it. We felt it as kids. Oh, and we feel it as parents. So when we heard that audio tape mm -hmm. of those kids in that center, separated from their parents for a whole lot more than 30 seconds, mm -hmm. not knowing where they are, not knowing when they're going to be back together with them, not knowing right now if they're going to be back together with them. I don't know if any clip of audio has ever hurt my heart as much as that audio tape. You don't have to have all the knowledge of the laws. You don't have to have knowledge of that much to know that the cries of children separated from their parents is about the worst thing that there is. And the fact that we're doing that, let's remember, we own the building behind us. We own the ICE building in Federal Plaza. We own the detention camps. That is us separating parents from their children. That is us causing those cries. And that's why I think we're all just feeling this so deeply. And what I want to put against that, the thing that we have today, luckily, is a lot of kids with us raising their voices. So we've heard from a lot of adults, but for a minute, I just want to hear from the kids who are here, and we're going to use the words that Alessia and Alaria have brought out. They have this beautiful sign, and on the back of it, will you turn it around, Alaria, so people can see? It says something pretty simple that our kids know. What's it say? Families belong together. So for just a minute, I just want to ask the young people in the crowd, we need to hear your voices. So if you're over 15, leave this to the younger ones. And let's just see how loud you can make us hear families belong together. Families belong together. Just the kids, all right? Come on, let's hear it. It really is that simple. Thank you. Thank you. Can't say motherhood without our majority leader, Councilwoman Cumbo. I want to begin by really thanking Borough President from the bottom of my heart for showing extreme leadership in a very critical time in our borough, in our city, and in our nation, and throughout the world. And this is powerful. Not too long ago, because that same person in the White House brought out our young people. They walked out of their schools because they wanted a change with gun reform. They wanted to see sensible gun laws. They wanted to eliminate guns throughout our country. And now today, we are here with our babies, with our children, with our toddlers, 
putting them out front on the front lines to speak on this particular issue. I am here today, and y'all gonna just have to excuse me because I'm a mob. You all can report on it however you want. You can call me teary-eyed, you can call me a crybaby, whatever you want to That's call right. me, That's right. okay? But I am a mother, and we carry our children in our bellies, in our wombs. We go through extensive labor. We come home, we try our best to do our best for our babies. We try our best to breastfeed them, to stay up at night late with them, to read to them, to educate them, to bring them into the world so that they can be all that they can be. And our first lady would have the audacity to wear a jacket that says, I really don't care, do you? A ridiculous, stupid, insensitive, immoral jacket to wear at this time to show this country what she thinks of our children. These are our children. Right. And so that is why we are here today, because this cannot happen. You cannot destroy families. You cannot tear apart the critical bond that a mother has to her child. You have crossed the line in a way where there is no going back. That's right. You have touched the most sensitive core of every being. And for those who still continue to support this president, for those who continue to say that they don't really care, to those who don't believe that those children are our children, we are sending a message today that you have crossed the line. You have gone too far. What you cannot hear, you are going to feel. We are going to continue to mobilize all across this world because you are not going to tear apart our families. You are not going to strip us of our children. You are not going to break down the dignity of our communities. I am a mother and I am angry. And if you anger a mother, you have angered the most powerful woman in the entire world. We are going to unite. Women all over this world are going to send a message that you are not going to turn us around. You will be out of that White House, and the mothers of this world are going to see to it. Thank you. God bless all of you, and continue to stand strong with all of our babies and all of our children. And I just want to say I'm here today because I'm blessed enough to be able to go home to my son tonight. That's why I'm here. That's why he's on the front lines, because I am blessed to be here. And every single person who is blessed to kiss their child goodnight tonight needs to be out on the front line, needs to raise their voice, needs to elevate, needs to send a message to the White House that we are not going to take this line down. Don't think a baby stroller is a sign of weakness. It's the most dangerous weapon in the world. Thank you so much, Thank Brown you. President Eric Adams. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. I want to hear from the mothers, one of our great mothers here in the community, district leader, Arellis Martinez. Woo! Thank you very much for the rally to our borough president and all the official electors, organizations, community, churches, and all the people who gathered together to say, no, no Trump, we are not tolerating this. This is impossible. This one goes against our family culture, our family basis. You cannot separate family. We have to keep our family united. And as she said, I'm a mother too. And not only that, I'm an immigrant that I got out from the country that my mother came here before. And I was separated from my parents, voluntary, left with a family member. But I still remember the trauma that I went in when my mother wasn't there at night time. When I went to the school and I had to make my own breath. I was only 10 years old. I cannot imagine ever how these children, two 
three years old, 12, 11, no matter the age, they're separated, seeing people who are strangers, crying in the day, in the night, and not to be heard. Trump, you gotta stop. And today, we are sending the message. You have to stop, and we gotta keep the family together. Thank you very much, but I wanna say one more thing. I wanna thank the police department of South Supply to keep this one so safe. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. we really responded responded immediately to our calls. We cannot thank Inspector Gonzalez enough, the commanding officer in the back. Thank you, 72nd Precinct, for really responding to our calls. That's, that's what law enforcement should do, respond to the call of the people, not rip children from their families. We also want to, just a special note to all the men and women of clergy that are, that are here uh, responding. This is really going to speak to the conscience of our country, and we need the men and women of the clergy to do so. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, St. Augustine's, St. Michael's, and also the Brooklyn Diocese has also played the role in doing so. We want to call on one of the voices in our community, Kirsten Foy, from the National Action Network. Yeah, Kirsten! Yeah. No justice, no justice, no justice, no justice. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? When do we want it? When do we want it? When I say no families, you say no peace. No family. No peace. No family. No peace. No family. No peace. When I say no parents, you say no peace. No parents. No peace. No parents. No peace. No parents. No peace. When I say no children, you say no peace. No children. No peace. No children. No peace. No children. No peace. No children. No peace. Once again, we have seen. American tyranny and fascism rear his ugly head in a way that has been historic. This president has put a stain on the Constitution as large as Jim Crow. He put a stain on the Constitution as large as Japanese internment camps. He put a stain on the Constitution as large as the Chinese Exclusion Act. He put a chain on this Constitution, a stain on this Constitution that reminds many of us whose ancestors were sold into slavery and ripped away from their families and had their children ripped out of their arms on the auction block. All right. those families that had to suffer through racial pogroms in Germany and suffer through Christo Knock and suffer through their children being ripped out of their arms as they got shipped off to concentration camp. Right. What this president has done yes. is united blacks and Jews, whites, Asians, religious people of all backgrounds, right. Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, Christians, Jews, we are all united with one cause. The elimination of American fascism in all of its ugly manifestations. And we're starting here with the reunification of our family. We have today in 2018, federal government sanctioned kidnapping That's right. of thousands of children of color. Call it what it is. This would not go uncalled out if it happened in Russia. This would not go uncalled out if it happened in Venezuela. This would not go uncalled out if it happened in Indonesia, if it happened in Hungary. But because it's happening in the United States, yes. we're too afraid to call it what it is. It's kidnapping of black and brown children by the federal government, and we're not having it. Those 
one of us that visited children in McAllen, like Reverend Sharpton and I did on Thursday, saw children crying because they don't know anyone around them. That's right. Because their parents were ripped from them by people in uniforms with an American flag on it. Yes. Their first introduction to America is their kidnapping from their parents. Wow. This is the trauma that we have inflicted on thousands of children. That's right. We here in New York City, under the leadership of people like Borough President Eric Adams, yes. are gonna, and under the leadership of people like Maury Cumbo, and Brad Landon, yes. and people like Corey Johnson, yes. and Robert Carnegie, yes. and people that don't always agree yes. on nothing else, yes. right. all stand in agreement. Yes. You give our children back, and you give them back today. Right. Yes. Give them back today. Yes. Give them back today. Yes. Not tomorrow, yes. not next week, today. Yes. Return our children today. Yes. I will close with this. I have brought my own two sons to this march because the family destruction requires a family resistance. The destruction and the attack on the family requires a family response. So we here today are a new family. Donald Trump has succeeded in creating a family richer and more diverse and more powerful than anything he could have ever imagined. We are coming for you, 45. You better pack up that house. You better pack up that truck. You are getting put out of our house. No justice. No parents. No children. No family. What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? When do we want it? When do we want it? Wow, it's hot in here. I am Pastor Gilford Monroe with the Office of the Borough President. And just before we have a closing prayer, there's two things that we want to do. Number one, we want to call up someone from the New York Immigration Coalition to give you a special message. And then we'll come up with a prayer. And then we want to turn so that they can know that we see them, that we hear them. And we're going to wave to them to let them know that we are outside and they are inside, but we're supporting them on the outside as well. Give it up again for Minister Kirsten Foy of the National Action Network. He moved me. Did he move everyone else? I can't hear you. Did he move everyone else? It's important that we feel moved today and we consistently show up in our outrage because the future of tomorrow is relying on us. My name is Carlene Pinto and I serve the New York Immigration Coalition as their New York City organizer. And we have 150 organizations across New York City that the last 18 months have been under attack. So whether it's the Muslim ban, whether it's the attack on the Dreamers, or whether it's ripping children from their parents, people need to consistently show up for Immigrant New York. Can I get everyone's commitment to keep showing up for justice? So this coming Saturday, June 30th, it's important that we all hit the streets. It's a national day of action that's being held coordinated by hundreds of organizations around the country, including moveon.org. The New York Immigration Coalition has helped anchoring the local action with our brothers and sisters that make the road and 1199 SEIU and Rise and Resist, the National Action Network and dozens of other organizations. We need people to show up at 10 a.m. at Foley Square. We're gonna be stepping off and marching across the Brooklyn Bridge and arriving at Cadman Plaza for a one hour rally, hearing from directly impacted members of our community. Are people gonna hit the streets next Saturday? I can't hear you, are people gonna hit the streets next Saturday? This is a family friendly event, bring your neighbors, bring your children, bring your strollers, 10 a.m. Foley Square. As our brother just said, it's important the people behind us hear us loud and clear. Right, everyone? Yeah. Can everyone put their fists up in the air? Yeah. No justice? No peace. No justice? No peace. When immigrants are under attack, what do we do? We got to get louder than that. When immigrants are under attack, what do we do? When our youth are under attack, what do we do?
Okay. Um, just before we pray, there's a young lady who is pressing. Come on, young lady. And she just wanted to say something. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Ikra Muhammad. I'm 17 years old. I have two sisters, age 12 and 8. And I just wanted to share that once I, my, I remember that my family and I, we went to Canada. And somehow I ended up getting lost. I was 11 years old. And I cannot explain to you how much that one moment traumatized me. The split second I realized that I was lost in an unknown place with unknown people, with unknown sights, it traumatized me and I still vividly remember it. So what about the children that were separated from their families? What about the children crying for someone that they know, someone that they are familiar with, anyone that they can have some comfort in? What are we going to do about that? We as New Yorkers, the Trump administration needs to know that we as New Yorkers, we will never stand for this. I don't even know how he thought this would be, this would be going on, but he needs to get it in his head that this is not going to work out. <laughs> so, um, I know that there's no more time left, so I'm just going to... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to have a prayer by Reverend Kevin Osborne. Just want to let you know, as a clergyman, I am gathering letters from signatures from clergy from across this borough. We're going to send it to our elected officials. We're going to send it to White House because we want the clergy of Brooklyn to have their voice be heard. Come on, put your hands together for the clergy. I think what's important in this moment are two things. First, we need to join hands together as a sign of unity. Join hands with someone as a sign of togetherness. We know that no matter what this administration is trying to do, the message that he may be sending is that this is the United, this is the divided states of America. But today we are saying that we are still the United States of America. Father, we thank you once again just for how you continue to shower your blessings upon us. As we look across this place right now, Father God, we ask you that you will continue to mobilize us. You will continue to raise up voices. You will continue, Father God, to release freedom into the atmosphere. Father God, right now, do not let our efforts stop here, but let us continue to move forward right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you are going to do in this moment, in this season, in this hour. You are raising up soldiers. You are raising up politicians. You are raising up boldness of people who will stand up and say, this will not happen in our watch. On our watch, this will not happen in our lifetime. This will not happen happen and it will stop. We thank you for the borough president. We thank you for all the other elected officials that are here. Those who could not even come. Those who are, 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 are um, being all around this globe, Father God, protesting right now. And we thank you for the hand that we hold. This is a sign of unity. This is a sign of togetherness. And even right now, we will release our neighbor's hand and put our hands together and give your glory. We will put our hands together and give your praise because we believe that we have come this far by faith. Faith God is here and faith is going to take us to the next level and we believe that it shall be done and it will happen with us in Jesus name we pray and we all say amen. All right let's turn this way we want to also thank um, and recognize council member Matthew Jean who is here. Let's turn this way they have been tapping the windows. And whatever you want to tell them, you can tell them, you can wave your hands. And as you leave, make sure that you travel on the sidewalk to be safe, especially those of you with children.
Keep, keep them in your prayers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming up. We thank you on the behalf of the borough president and his staff and everyone in New York City. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you, and we'll see you again. Be safe.